This is one of the most ambitious, if not the most ambitious, handmade puppet animated films ever. You can spot a Wes Anderson movie from a mile away. With movies like The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, Moonrise Kingdom, and The Grand Budapest Hotel, he's shown that every little detail counts. In 2009, he jumped into stop motion animation with the instant classic Fantastic Mr. Fox. Now, he's giving it a second go with Isle of Dogs, a film set in a dystopian Japan overrun by dogs. In reality, it was shot on massive, handcrafted sets in a studio in England. Stop motion movies require unique skills to get made. Every movement of every character has to be carefully placed, then filmed. But Wes Anderson seems to take it up a notch. So how does he create animated films that mirror his signature movie-making style? One element that made Isle of Dogs particularly challenging? Fur. Animators usually place facial expressions onto puppets. That was easy to do for the film's human characters, in which new faces were simply placed on top of the silicone skin. It's much tougher when you're dealing with four-legged characters covered in fur that you can't remove. Each puppet has a metal armature inside, which helps it move. The dog's faces had to be moved by an animator. Meet Andy Gent, the head of the movie's puppet department, who also worked with Anderson on Fantastic Mr. Fox, where they got plenty of experience making moving animal puppets. We look good. Yeah, we do. One of the things Wes, you know, said that uh, the fur moves a little bit. It's got to feel like it's been, you know, in the wind sort of touched. Fur on uh, stop motion puppets is a very tricky thing to do and it's, it's normally avoided at all costs. But uh, as with Wes, it's like, well, why is it avoided? Let's just try it. So making this happen is going to be a lot easier than making this happen. In Isle of Dogs, they took it to the next level. Animators used pins or wooden sticks to move their eyeballs and lips and give them real emotions and facial expressions. Previous ones like Fantastic Mr. Fox, we had about 370. So um, we had 1105 at the end of this. That's a lot of fur. Anderson pushed the animators to their limits. Scenes involving Looney Tunes-like cartoon clouds of smoke were constructed using wool. Meanwhile, a sushi-making sequence took eight months to bring to life, and the puppets ranged in size. While some puppets were the size of a fingernail, others were big enough to climb into. While stop motion is an old-fashioned art form, it is not going anywhere. With the invention of video assist and digital cameras, um, we can see things immediately, and it means that we can do way more sophisticated things. And, and I think one of the things that's really changed it is that it's become very accessible to people. So uh, most of my friends' kids are doing stop motion at home, which when I started out, like, you'd have to be at university before you'd even think about getting to that. The future, it seems, might be full of fantastic Mr. Foxes and robotic dogs. <laughs>